quickly we're going to look at some scripture text here speaking in tongues and uh, when you go to Facebook you find a lot of folks out there that don't believe in speaking in tongues in our generation and uh, I, I have no idea where they get that at because when Pastor Paul wrote the instructions and set in order the things for the church one of the main things was the gifts of the spirit and uh it had to do with speaking in tongues. And a lot of those that fight against speaking in tongues, nobody in their church speaks in tongues. I mean, even if they thought that they don't, according to Paul, somebody in that church should operate the gift of tongues, the gift of interpretation of tongues, and those things like that. But we don't find that in our day. Of course, there is mystery Bible in that play that deceives the whole world and she's got many deceived. So we're going to look at the, about, the part about speaking in tongues. Now we, we're going to prove you from these scripture texts. It's valid. It's real. It's in the church. And when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, a lot of folks get the gift of tongues mixed up with just speaking in tongues. And that's two different things all together. I'll say it now, then we'll do, say it again later on. When you receive the Holy Ghost, like those in the Bible... When they were speaking in tongues and praising God, they were talking to God. When you go in the closet prayer, if you have the Holy Ghost and you speak in tongues, you're praying to God. You're talking to God. When the gift of tongues has been operated, it's God operating the gift in a certain individual, and He is speaking through them to somebody else. There is a difference of direction of the words and the conversation there. So don't forget that. That will separate about the gift than about just speaking in tongues. That will separate a whole lot, give a lot of understanding the difference there. A lot of folks say, well, I, don't, I didn't get the Holy Ghost speak in tongues because I don't, you know, I just don't ever believe everybody speaks in tongues. And whenever, when you get the Holy Ghost, the real Holy Ghost, you will speak with tongues. You may not get the gift. There's nine gifts. Everybody don't get the gift of healing. And everybody don't get the gift of wisdom. Everybody don't get the gift of discernment. But the Holy Ghost is a different thing. And we'll look at it and we'll start off with the very first one in Mark 16, 17. And these signs, Jesus Christ said, shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. These that believe. These signs shall follow them. <clears throat> Anybody that's got the Holy Ghost has got power. Casting out devils is not a special gift that, well, they can do it, but I can't. You know, it's a matter of you seeking God and getting empowered more and more of the Holy Ghost. And uh, that's all lacking there. Maybe some prayer and fasting. Disciples couldn't cast out some demons. And, and Jesus said this kind only comes out by prayer and fasting. <clears throat> but when you get the Holy Ghost, you can do those things. After you receive the Holy Ghost, you receive power. And he said... One of the signs is they shall speak with new tongues. And I looked up the word in the original that that was wrote in, and it said a language not proper to the speaker. In other words, a language that the speaker does not know. Tongues, that's what we call tongues. It's actually a different language. So that should settle a whole lot of questions, but a lot of folks just think, well, I think I can get saved without it. Well, let's look. In Luke 24, 49, Jesus Christ speaking to his disciples said, Behold, now this is just before he ascended to heaven, 500 people out there. 
I see in the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. So he met them out there, and as I believe another book says, after he spoke the word to them, he lifted his hands, he blessed them. 500 witnessed this. His feet left the ground, and he went straight up into the clouds while Peter and John and others sat there gazing, <laughs> wondering how he done that, I guess. He left. He left, went to the third heaven, as Paul said. He didn't go to Mars or Pluto and all that stuff. He went to the third heaven, which I think is a different dimension. But that, you know, besides that, had nothing to do with outer space planets and stuff. But he told them to go to Jerusalem and tarry to you and do it with power. From on high. He didn't say oh, you're going to speak in tongues when you get there now. He did not tell them that. They had no idea. Now, we find on the day of Pentecost, which we're going to show you in a minute, 120 out of the 500 showed up. 120 people that heard him say that showed up. While they were there for seven days, Apostle Peter was the main speaker you'll see in Acts 1, Acts 2, and other places. Because Jesus Christ had done spoken after a prayer with God, he spoke and said, Peter, I give you the keys. And so that's why you find Peter doing the speaking on that day of Pentecost. So when that day come, they went back to Jerusalem. They went into the upper room, and as it says, verse 14 and 15 of Acts 1, these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus. Jesus' mama was there. And his brethren, most likely at least Jude and James, because they both wrote books. Now, I don't know about Joseph and Simon. He had four brothers at least mentioned, half-brothers, I guess we'd call it that. And, uh, but Mary, his mother, and his brothers were there with the other folks. Verse 15, in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples. And then he puts in parentheses, letting you know how many was there and who all was there. The number of names together were about, about 120 were there in the upper room. Seven days. They waited. They waited. Had no idea what to expect. He just said, go and tear. They went and they waited. Seven days. They prayed. They waited. They talked. They prayed. Waiting, waiting, waiting. And then on the day of Pentecost, in Acts 2 and 4, they were all, including Jesus and Mom, filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. When you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you don't have to try to make tongue, because when anybody tries to mimic tongue now, you're deceiving yourself. And I think that goes on in Pentecost as well. I think some folks try to make it happen, and you all you got to do is live right, all you got to do is make sure you have repented and you want to serve Jesus Christ and uh, live, die, seek, or swim. You can sold out. You draw the line in the sand and you're not planning on going back. That kind of repentance. And then you're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and every sin you have ever done from the birth, if you ever done anything when you're born, all the way to the present tense time of your life is forgiven even murder, anything else. It's wiped clean. That's what water baptism does. From that point on, you're wanting to be put into the kingdom of God. You're not in there yet. Now, and according to the word of God, no man can call Jesus Lord except by the Holy Ghost. So he's really not your Lord until he puts you in the kingdom. And the Bible says, that God translates us into the kingdom of His dear Son. Then He is our Lord. 
He is our ruler. He is our master. We are his servants. From that point on at the house of God, our lives are judged. Whether it be good or bad, we speak good, we speak bad, whatever we do is logged in some kind of way. He records it better than any computer system we got. He knows how many hairs on your head. So he knows all that. He, he said we'll give account of every idle word when we come at judgment. Everything will be weighed out in the balance. Whether it be good or whether it be bad. But at least we are born again. We in the kingdom. We are His. And it's up to us to grow. So once we have repented, once we have been water baptized in Jesus' name, we're awaiting, tarrying for the Holy Ghost. That's where it comes in hard praying. Seeking God. Earnest prayer. Crying. Seeking As hard as you know how. You will break down your ego. That's why you don't find doctors and lawyers and Indian chiefs much in something like this. They're too dignified. I'm not going to... How many, how many real big fancy doctors, how many lawyers, how many judges... Could you imagine coming down to an altar? Really praying through, because when you do, you will cry. You will probably have to blow your nose. Could you see any of them wanting to do that? The Bible says in the last days they would heap to themselves teachers having each an ear. They will pay ministers that are false that don't teach you to get born again. Those type of society folks will sit in some house somewhere claiming they're his bride when according to the word of God, they're in Revelation 17. You see, deceptions. Few will find eternal life. These 120, you subtract that, what, 380 didn't get the Holy Ghost that day. They had other fish to fry. They had other things on their mind. They might have showed up and seen the excitement of Jesus going into heaven, but they didn't follow through. The 120 all began to speak with other tongues. The Spirit gives the utterance. They didn't know they were going to do that, by the way. They didn't go up there saying, oh, I'm going to get the Holy Ghost, and I know I've got to speak in tongues, so I've got to. And I've seen preachers do this. I've seen them when they're praying for it. Uh, <laughs> trying to get you to cross up your language that ain't the way the Holy Ghost comes in the night I received the Holy Ghost when I was praying I, I had my eyes shut I dug in like I said I prayed 15 or 20 minutes I didn't get nothing and I prayed as hard as I could and they folks talked me back into trying it again and I had my eyes closed and I was praising the Lord, calling on the name of Jesus Christ. Next thing you know, my right hand, Joe, I felt something chicken. I even stopped and looked. I thought, Brother A.B. Russell had my hand. <laughs> and I looked over there and he praying hard as I would. He wasn't touching me. I knew something's going on then. I shut my eyes. I started calling on Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then so hard I thought, I want the Holy Ghost. I started praising. Next thing you know, both hands choked it. And then the language changed on its own. I wasn't trying to figure out what, did I hear somebody speak in tongues? I'm going to try to say what they're saying. All of a sudden, it changed. And these folks here, all 120, including Jesus' his own mama, why wouldn't you want to get something they got? Look at this, Acts 9, 17. Somebody said, well, Paul, I said, I told you, and he didn't speak in tongues. But I didn't say he did right here, does it? Don't say it, does it? Let's read it. Now, Adonis was a minister, a devout man according to the law. Anybody read that part? Here's the way the Lord worked with Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul, before he was Apostle Paul, was Saul of Tarsus. He persecuted Christianity. 
He had them arrested. He had a, the goods confiscated. He had some of them, at least with them, when they stoned them and put them to death, like Stephen. That's where Paul was. All the time Paul was doing that, though, in his heart and mind, I'm serving God, and I'm not going to go for any kind of false doctrine in our religions. That, that's what was on his heart. He thought for sure he's doing the will of God. Jesus met him on the road to Damascus, didn't he? Smote him blind. Jesus told him to go into this certain house, uh, a street or a house or whatever it was. I forgot the names of them. And he was blind. They led him. He was blind. He got in there and he started praying. Jesus doesn't talk to him verbally. He said, who up there? He said, I'm Jesus. Paul, from that point on, went in there and was praying and calling on the Lord. And the Lord appeared to him there while he was praying. In the vision, in his heart and mind, I guess, because he couldn't see with a natural eye. And the Lord told him, said, there's a man going to come in here named Ananias. He's going to open your blind eyes and tell you what you need to do. On the other hand, Ananias was fasting and praying, seeking God, loving God. The Lord appeared to him. He said, hey, there's a man named Saul over yonder at this certain location. I want you to go over there. He's blind. He's praying. I want you to open his blind eyes. Ananias almost had to argue, tried to argue with Jesus. Ananias said, Lord, we've heard what he's doing, resting folks, helping people be put in prison or death or whatever. And he, he was trying to tell the Lord, Lord, we've heard about him. I think the Lord told him, said, away. In other words, obey me. Go, go. He's praying. He knocks on the door. Somebody else answered it wherever he was. Saul hears the words of the man. He, I'm Ananias. Is Saul of Tarsus here. I'm going to tell you right now, I believe I've gone through the roof. And Jesus told me, he said, there's a man coming here named Ananias. He's going to open my blind eyes. And that's what happened. Ananias went his way, entered into the house, putting his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way. How do you know that? Saul didn't tell him. Jesus told Ananias. That appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me that thou might receive thy sight and what? Be filled with the Holy Ghost, but it does not tell you he spoke in tongues. Now, some of them that try to argue, they'll argue any way they can because they don't want to come down there. They're too lazy to seek God in real heart prayer and pray through and get the Holy Ghost. So they try to figure it out. Ha ha, they didn't speak in tongues there. That might be me. What do you think? Let's look at something. First Corinthians 14, 18, 19, Apostle Paul writing the letter back to the Corinthian church. He said, take this letter and pass it to all the churches. Paul said, I thank my God. I speak with tongues more than you all. When do you think he started? When do you think he started speaking in tongues? And he said, I speak in tongues more than all of you. You see, we're supposed to pray in the Spirit. We're supposed to go in our closets and pray until we speak in tongues in the Spirit because the Holy Ghost knows what to say, whereas you're just wanting to ask something for your own self. That's why it's important. And anyway, somebody said, well, I call you 14, 10, 12 languages, something I've heard that come out before. Anything they try to figure out that speaking in tongues is just having the wisdom to know different languages. No, that is not it. That is not it. That's not the way it works. It's not you knowing a foreign language. If you happen to come in here, you fool us, but you can't fool Jesus. If you know Spanish... And you come in here and you knelt down there and you start Jesus, Jesus. Next thing you knew, you start doing this whole Jesus. <laughs> and you start speaking Spanish stuff. Everybody else might think you're getting the Holy Ghost. But Jesus knows you didn't get it because you're speaking a language that you know. Now, we can prove it. Paul said, when he said, I speak with tongues more than you all, yet in church, I'd rather speak words with my understanding. Now, to me, it wouldn't be English. 
To him, it's probably Hebrew. I'd rather speak my words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others, because you can't teach others speaking in tongues. Than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue, referring to what he's talking about right up here in this other verse. When I speak with tongues more than you all, but in church I'd rather speak five words in the language I know than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. He's not talking about a language he learned in college somewhere. So, that's where, when he received the Holy Ghost right there, the writer did not have to write in there for anybody's benefit, Paul spoke in tongues. He didn't have to do that. I've noticed in uh, different churches in the past when folks received the Holy Ghost in Dyersburg, we would be at Hickman or somewhere else, and they say, well, they had a revival in Dyersburg and five got the Holy Ghost. Nobody ever questioned, did they speak in tongues? They never said, and they spoke in tongues. We knew they did. Because we knew what we teach about that. Same way in many places in Acts when it talks about they received the Holy Ghost, they don't have to write, they spoke in tongues. But Paul did right there. In Acts 10, 44 and 46, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues. Language that they didn't know. And uh, you had, back in those days, Jews would not go in the house of a Gentile. They just wouldn't do it. You know, they had that type of relationship with Gentiles. They didn't want to go in the house of a Gentile and they didn't want to associate basically with Gentiles. Even they looked down on the Samaritans. So it was that when uh, Jesus got ready to baptize Cornelius, that was a Gentile, he had served God with all of his heart, gave alms, done this, done that, fasted, prayed, but he wasn't born again. An angel appeared to Cornelius and said, Get Simon Peter. He will tell you how you and your household can be saved. How they can be saved. And um, so that, that day and time, Cornelius sent some men to get Peter. He, he brought some brothers with him. I think it was either five or seven. No, the other Jews. And they came in there and they themselves did not know they were going to speak with tongues. And Peter began to preach about Jesus of Nazareth. How God anointed him. What God done through Jesus of Nazareth. While Peter was preaching, since they had already had repentance, by wanting to serve God, doing everything they knew to serve the Lord God Almighty. That's all that was on their mind. Cornelius fasted, prayed. He gave alms. He done this. He done that. He, he helped the nation of Israel, gave them money. So God saw this. And uh, while he was preaching, his family, his household, it didn't say how many they were. The Holy Ghost fell on all of them all of them, and they began to speak with tongues. The six Jews, I think six or seven, like I said, we had to check back in the scripture text for sure, were sitting there and they were amazed. I guess their jaws dropped and their eyes bugged a little bit because these are Gentiles speaking in tongues. Just like we did in Acts 2 4. So, because it said verse 46. For they heard them speak with tongues. That's how they knew. These signs shall follow them that believe. They shall speak with new tongues. Acts 19, verse 2 and 6. 
Here's an event in time where a whole church at Ephesus had repented, had been baptized, believing that Jesus was Christ, didn't have the Holy Ghost. Actually, they were baptized wrong, but they were baptized. Pastor Paul comes into that church and perceives that they don't have the Holy Ghost. Now, how in the world, how could you say that you can discern somebody ain't got the Holy Ghost? You know how? After he's there a while, none of them are in the Spirit enough and speak in tongues. None. Nobody. Nobody in that church in Ephesus spoke in tongues. Yet they gather around, they believe Jesus was the Son of God. They believe Jesus was the Christ. Apollos had baptized them. The wrong way, but they were baptized. And Paul come in there. He asked them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said, we have not so much as heard. There are millions of people in religion today that the man behind their pulpit has not taught them and, and preached to them that truth. Basically, they really hadn't heard. They've heard the deception that you can get the Spirit without getting the Spirit, without getting the Holy Ghost. You can get the Spirit to accept Christ in your heart. There's nowhere in the Bible anybody ever received Christ in their heart and received the Holy Ghost. Nobody. That is from Mr. Babylon. That's one of the greatest deceptions they've got going. Even Jude said in the last days they would separate themselves being sensual, having not the Spirit. Having not the Spirit. They would separate themselves. They're sensual. They'll argue with you. They'll tell you we don't have to speak in tongues. They've got a whole church, folks that don't speak in tongues. They do not have the Spirit, but they think they do. Paul said deceivers will wax worse and worse, deceived and being deceived. Jesus said, many shall come in my name telling them I'm the Christ and shall deceive you because they won't preach you the truth. Few We'll find eternal life, Jesus Christ said. That ought to be enough common sense that anybody realize if there's only few who are going to find eternal life, then there's fewer of the few that are preaching the truth. Everybody that carries a Bible and claims to be a minister of God is not. Paul said there are ministers of Satan. That's in 2 Corinthians. They, they don't read that. So you've got to be aware of what you're being drilled and drilled and drilled in your mind. Paul said, have you received the Holy Ghost? They said, well, we ain't even heard. Well, there be a Holy Ghost. When Paul laid his hands on them in verse 6, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues. After Paul explained it, after they understood, no, I don't have it, they wanted it. They prayed. Paul, as an apostle, prayed with them, laid hands on them. And they spake with tongues. When the Holy Ghost came in, just like Acts 2 and 4, just like Paul did when he got the Holy Ghost, from that point on, they can go into their closets and pray in the Spirit. They pray in tongues. Because that's what we're supposed to do. And if you've got the Holy Ghost and you don't practice that, you're not overcoming nothing. You won't overcome nothing until you get where you can pray in the Spirit. And I'll show you. 1 Corinthians 14, 2. Now, referring again about speaking in tongues. Paul said, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men. Now, you catch this. Again, we just mentioned it a while ago. The difference of the gift and just getting in somewhere and praying in tongues. Even Paul said the whole church in, in, in that same chapter. The whole church could speak with tongues, but he said if somebody comes in unlearned, what will they think about you? He said they'll think you're mad. What does that mean? Think you're crazy. 
They'll think you're crazy. <laughs> the unlearned hear somebody speaking in tongues think they are crazy. On the day of Pentecost, when they came out speaking in tongues, there was a lot of them out there that were mocking. Said, these are drunk with new wine. What made them think they were drunk? How do you act when you get the Holy Ghost? Not like the doctors and the lawyers. How do you act when you get the Holy Ghost? Them on the day of Pentecost, they thought they were drunk. How do you act if you should really truly intoxicated? Well, first of all, your eyes are watering, bloodshot from crying. You have to blow and wipe your nose. I've seen drunks just like that before in, in taverns. I've heard of some. I've heard of some drinking some kind of drink and uh, getting all turned away and snot come out their nose and went right down there drinking them up that bottle. <laughs> now they were drunk. I'm telling you, on the day of Pentecost, they thought they were drunk and they were mocking them. They were staggering. Because when you have a good prayer set, first of all, it is new wine. You get that wine of Jesus Christ, it will make you feel like that. And they were staggering around. And they were speaking in tongues and all oh, they were staggering around. Because when you, when you got to mind of the Lord, you're not watching every step you put things. And naturally, some folks wobble more than others. <laughs> so they thought they were drunk with new wine. And Paul said, if the whole church, if all of y'all, because everybody was thrilled out about getting the Holy Ghost. Once you get the genuine Holy Ghost and you can pray in tongues, it's a thrill, I'm telling you. When you do, you feel that feeling inside. You feel the fire. And just like a kid with a new toy. I heard another minister say one time, so excited about it, they didn't know, just like a kid with a new red wagon, they didn't know where to push it or pull it. They so excited. <laughs> I love it. I, spent, I used to come to church about years ago, and I'd walk up, like I told you, I'd go up to that old wooden altar, I had calluses on my elbow, I'd get up there and I'd put both flags up. <laughs> I'd prop my elbows up, Praise in Jesus Christ, pray for about 30 minutes before they ding the bell start church. I'd be speaking in tongues. I'm telling you, I was young, I was new, this was brand new. And I was loving it. Paul said, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue. Somebody said, we don't do it at our church. Well, Paul said, when you do, whoever, the ones that get it do. He that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not to men. They speak to God. Unto God, for no man understands him. Now, I've heard some say the only way they spoke in tongues, it was a foreign language that they had to speak to get them folks to hear it. Then I thought of another question back to the ones that said that. I said, say you're an evangelist and you go to a foreign country and there's no interpreter there. Do you think, if, since you tell me you got the Holy Ghost without speaking in tongues and, and therefore there's no need to speak in tongues, all of a sudden you're going to preach and them folks can't understand you, did you think that if you got the Holy Ghost, it will kick in gear and give you that language? They didn't want to answer that. Because they know they just couldn't do it. That's not the way it works. That's not the kind of interpretation it's talking about. Paul said that when you pray in tongues, speak an unknown tongue, you're speaking to God. When you get in a religious service, now if you had good music, well, I got an old dilapidated guitar, you can't halfway play it. You take a church that's got drums. You take a church that's got good musicians, good song leaders. You can get with it. Nothing wrong with dancing before the Lord it's in the Psalms of David. God loves him. Some folks get all carried away and run now. And somebody else will try to follow them because they saw them do it. That ain't the way it works. That ain't the way it's supposed to do it. You do it because you feel it. Somebody will stand there and start praising Jesus and start speaking in tongues. Maybe half a dozen. And that's fine in worship. 
No, I'll try to go through the gifts right there, all that, but let's go. Verse 14, Paul said that he had the Holy Ghost. We just showed you he prayed more in tongues than anybody else. And he referred to unknown tongues in the next verse on down where he said he did. He said, if I pray in an unknown tongue, he said, my spirit prays. But my understanding is unfruitful. There goes that old theologian saying that Paul knew 12 languages and that's how come he spoke in different languages. Because Paul just made it plain right there. If I pray in an unknown tongue, in any language I know, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit's praying. He said, but I don't understand what it's saying. My understanding is unfruitful, but I hear the words. Paul spoke in tongues like that. Now, here's what Jude said. And I put the M-O-U-N-S-E or how you pronounce that that puts the I guess it's the Greek in under it in the word translated from. Jude said, but you dear friends and this Jesus is half brother build yourselves up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit which we call Holy Ghost. So you build yourselves up in your most holy faith and you pray in the Spirit. Jude is telling the Christian pray in the Holy Ghost. When you go to your closet prayers, like Paul said, when I pray in unknown tongue, my spirit is praying. That's why it's important you pray in tongues. Another place Paul said the Holy Ghost Inter makes intercession for us because we don't know what how, what to utter. And it does. We don't understand what it's saying, but the Holy Ghost, He gave us power. let tell you what, it's better than a cell phone. You have a connection <clears throat> with the Lord through the Holy Ghost. You can go somewhere and pray and speak in tongues. The Holy Ghost inside of you is making that communication to the heavens. Well, the Lord is. And you don't know what he's saying. But he does. That's why he said, I, after you receive the Holy Ghost, you receive power. Your own personal cell phone with the Lord. And here finally, 1 Corinthians 14, 39, I asked a minister, I asked a man one time I worked with who went to denominational church at I said, if I were to come to your church and speak in tongues, what would they do? He said, they'd lead you to the door. <laughs> I ain't going to tell you what religion that was. That's what he told me. I liked him. I liked him, though. And I asked him a question. I said, look at this right here now. I said, now, why would Paul say that? Y'all don't believe in speaking in tongues. Because Paul said, brother, tell me to prophesy. And forbid not to speak with tongues. I said, now how you, if you forbid anybody speaking, how are you obeying Paul? Because Paul said, what, let everybody acknowledge what I'm writing down are the commandments of the Lord. What Jesus had Paul to write down, he's writing it down. So how can you say you're obeying God by forbidding anybody to speak with tongues? It's just their religion. They've got the doctors there. They've got their lawyers there. The judge goes there. The president might go there. The senators might go there. None of them are born again. Not even their preacher are born again. They're lost. The blind lead the blind where Jesus said they're going. If the blind lead the blind. If our gospel is hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Few will find eternal life. Peter said, if the righteous scarcely be saved. What do you think that means if, when you hear that word? Scarcely. They make it sound like everybody in the whole country is going. 
You go to any funeral you want to. I don't care how rotten or low down the person was. I guarantee you there'll be some preacher somewhere and say, they're in a better place. Lying through their teeth. Should know better. Either they don't or they do and lying to the people. I'm telling you right now, most of them that go through the funeral home are going to a lake of fire and the preacher just ain't got what it takes to tell the people. Because you can't change that person's life anyway. They go. I heard a man in California, a preacher that believed in the Holy Ghost. His daddy died lost and another minister was going to preach it of another religion. He said he met with him before the service. He said, I'm going to tell you right now, he was a big guy. He said he told that preacher, he said, I'm going to tell you right now, if you say words to make my family out there think that he went to heaven, and he cried over his daddy. But he said, if you make them think he went to heaven, he said, man, you fixing to meet after that. And he meant it. I don't know what way he meant, but he meant it. He said his daddy died lost. He wasn't in church. And any minister that will try to insinuate a person to say when he ain't, they either they're lost along with it or, or they're lying. And they're, they would be lost if they're lying, right? If they knew it. Everybody that goes to their funeral home is not saved. But you hear it all. Read Facebook. It don't matter who dies, how they died, where they went, what they've been doing. They could have been cussing and doing adultery, uh, lying, stealing, cheating, and everything else, and then fell over with a heart attack, and somebody said they went to heaven. It's not so. Now, do you want somebody to preach the truth, or you want them kind of preachers that tickle that ear and try to soothe you in and get your money? Well, that's what a lot of them do it for. Jesus said, and Paul said, Beware! Let no man deceive you by any means. Covet to prophesy, forbid not to speak with tongues. Praise God. All right, let's close that part out. I hope we went through enough scriptures. I know we didn't touch everything there. And I thought I was hit lightly, but evidently I went longer than I meant to. Where the dear